I miss the place where I grew up, but it strains me to go back there. My brother and two of my sisters rarely visit. The two who live there are continually frustrated with my father. I was born a middle child into a middle class family in a little town in the middle of the corn and soybean fields of the Midwest. Squeezed in the middle, the overly sensitive one, the one my mom relied on to adapt, to be flexible, to carry on. She was hell-bent on raising a strong family, a rooted farm girl from a long, long line of the same. We learned how to make everything from scratch, biscuits, the flour and baking powder sifted three times, double-crusted fruit pies, cherry, rhubarb, and gooseberry. Mom liked Dot Kaufman's lard pastry recipe the best, with her secret ingredient, a tablespoon of vinegar. She made all of our clothes and taught us girls to sew. My favorites were the matching dresses for Easter Sunday. We spent countless hours pitting, coring, and slicing. Home canned peaches, green beans, sauerkraut, and applesauce. We would kid her that her favorite motto was, the family that works together, works together. She didn't think it was funny. My relationship to the land was deeply rooted to generations of living in that place. Certain trees were characters in my experience. We knew where to find wild onions and mushrooms every spring because we'd found them near the same rotted logs many seasons before. Every spring and winter, we waded in the Ambra River's flooded banks or ice skated on her frozen cornfield lakes. After high school, I moved off, as they say, to another rural place in the mountains of eastern Kentucky. Five years ago, my mother passed away. And now I find it painful to visit her once immaculate house. The brick paths we laid outside the back porch are buried beneath crabgrass. The intricate gardens she worked so hard to fashion are in shambles falling around my aging father, decline everywhere. Her prized roses compete with a poplar sprout that he can't bear pulling. The kitchen counters are overflowing with Cheez-Its, rotting tomatoes, junk mail, and the newest addition to my father's barbecue sauce collection. He spends most of his dinners alone, eating meat patties he broils in his toaster oven. At those frequent moments when I think, I should call mom and ask her about how much salt she uses in her St. Marie chicken, or just to talk. I wonder what happened to her regimen, to her fidelity to labor in the homemade, to our connection with the river. Most painfully, I wonder what has happened to relationships within my family, the friendships we forged clearing the brush in the shrub border. It is not clear to me that my brother and sisters feel the loss. That saddens me. We've been unable to keep the continuity beyond her presence to fulfill her expectations.